Hey guys, welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Uh, today I'm just going to do a, a quick little demo on how to create a simple corridor in Blender for importation into Unity. And we're also going to discuss today a little bit how uh, normals work in Blender and uh, how to make sure that when we're creating 3D models um, that uh, they will uh, be seen in Unity properly. Okay, so let's get started. So first off, I'm gonna to switch to Cycles Render as always, and I'm just going to create a simple cube. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the N key to bring up my side transform panel here, and I'm gonna set a very specific scale over here on the right. I'm actually gonna make it, uh, let's see, uh, seven by two by two. Okay, uh, just after some trial and error, I found that uh, this is a good size for Unity for a simple corridor, and it'll allow you to make a modular uh, level pretty easily. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab. I'm going to go into face select mode down here at the bottom, and I'm going to select that face, and let's get rid of that face there, and then let's get rid of that face at the back. Excellent, that looks good, and we have a very simple corridor now. However, uh, if we were to input this into Unity, uh, you would actually fall right through it, and that's because uh, the normals are facing outward. Uh, the normals, um, every 3D model has a visible side and an invisible side, essentially, and uh, normals tend to face outwards, and uh, you can't really tell in Blender because it shows you both sides, uh, of a 3D model, so you can see the outside there, but you can also see the side here. But if you were to bring this inside of Unity, uh, essentially you'd be seeing through these walls here. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to uh, enable a setting here in Blender so we can see the models how Unity would see them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So over here on the side panel, remember you get the side panel by tapping N under shading. There's an option here called back face culling. I'm going to select that. And now you kind of see what I've been talking about here. Uh, this is how Unity will see your objects. You can see the normals now, they're facing outwards, and it's essentially invisible if you're looking from the inside. So that won't do as a corridor. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip these normals and reverse their direction. So I'm going to press A to select all. I'm still in edit mode, as you can see. And then I'm going to go down to the mesh option, normals, flip normals. Excellent. Uh, so now we have a corridor that you would be able to import in Unity and uh, run around in. But let's add a, a few textures onto this object here. Uh, so it just looks a little nicer when we bring it into Unity. Now this isn't too different when we did the previous lesson on how to import textures when we did the cube. Uh, but we're going to have three different textures. We're going to have a floor, a wall, and a roof texture. Uh, and it's not too trickier to, uh, to kind of uh, bring in multiple different textures there. So uh, I'm going to change my view mode from default to UV editing. I'll zoom out over here, looks good. And I'm gonna start by selecting the floor. I'm gonna press U for unwrap, and I've now unwrapped my floor. Now over here in the left-hand window, I'm gonna click open. I'm gonna to go to my textures folder, and let's do that texture there. Excellent. Um, I'm now gonna go back to default view. And once again, I'm gonna go over to the materials tab over here on the right. We're gonna make a new material. We're gonna to go to the color. And we're gonna to go to image texture. We're gonna open, and uh, you guessed it, we're gonna to go to our textures, and we're gonna put that great floor texture in and assign it. Now you may not see it here, but that's because we just need to change our view mode from solid to texture. Excellent. But that doesn't look great. Um, everything's kind of stretched, and that's because uh, the texture is a square, but we've applied it to a rectangular shape. So we're going to fix that in a little bit. But first, let's just load in the rest of our textures uh, while we're uh, over here. So over here on the materials uh, option at this, on the right-hand side, we're going to add a new material. New. Change the color to an image texture. Open. Texture. And there's the wall. And then let's add one more new image texture. Open textures and there's the roof okay so now i'm going to take the wall there and apply the wall take this wall apply the wall and take the ceiling and apply the ceiling now you're not really going to see anything because we haven't unwrapped them properly yet uh, so let's go ahead and do that now so let's go back to uv editing and you can see you can switch this over to texture mode now too so you can kind of see what it's looking like Let's select this wall u for unwrap and look, you have the wall texture on there now. Select this one, U for unwrap. And let's select the roof, U for unwrap. Excellent. Um, you'll actually notice that the wall 
has the wall texture, but it's got this picture over here. That doesn't matter. This is just a reference image now at this point since we've applied them as materials. Uh, so that's looking pretty good, but let's fix the scaling issue here, uh, right? Because like I said, you've applied a square texture onto a rectangular shape. I mean, that's a rectangle, but we have a square over here that's easily fixed. We're gonna go over to the left-hand window here. We'll go to the face select mode down on there, click this, and we're gonna hit S for scale. And when we hit S, it's gonna allow us to scale this cube up. Um, so if we just scale it uniformly like that, that's not exactly what we want. So uh, instead of just pressing S for scale, I'm gonna press S, and then I'm actually gonna press Y. And if I press Y, it's only gonna scale it on the Y axis. But once again, that's not exactly what I want. So let's escape, and let's try S, and then let's try X to scale it on the X axis. That looks a lot better. And let's go for three panels there. You can see that looks pretty good now. It is no longer stretched. Three panels fit along that corridor. Looks good. And if you wanted to, you could do the same for the wall panels here. So I'll select the wall panel. Go over to the left-hand side of the screen. We'll click on there. We're going to S and then X. And then you could stretch that out. So we got four panels there now instead of the two. So let's do the same for this one. Click on there. Then over here on the left-hand side, S then X and scale those until we have four panels. Um, if you wanted to, you could do the same with the roof. I'm gonna leave the roof, but uh, there we go. We've created a very simple corridor that we could then bring into Unity, which I will explain in another video. So hope that helped. Uh, I'll come back in a bit and uh, we'll uh, teach you how to do slightly more advanced corridors and uh, we will see you all later. All right, bye-bye.